Good morning. Christmas is coming. Everybody's making their final preparations. And after thousands of years of promises and prophecies, the first Christmas was coming. And so the Lord made his final preparations. He sent his angel Gabriel to a virgin named Mary to announce that she would be the mother of the, the Son of God. And we'll meditate on that this morning as we now come to the fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas comes near. So God bless your worship this morning. Please stand, we'll begin with our opening song, our Advent gathering song. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess I am my God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we might receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading this morning from 2 Samuel brings to our attention once again the covenant the Lord established with King David. The covenant that he would have a descendant, the promised Savior, 
who would establish a kingdom that would have no end. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now, I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. The word of the Lord. We light four Advent candles remembering Jesus, the Son of God and Son of Mary. He came to share our humanity. Give him a place in our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Please stand. We hear the gospel account of the Annunciation. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. 
even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our word of God this morning is uh, selected verses from Psalm 89. A masquil of Ethan the Ezraite. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever and you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself you said i have made a covenant with my chosen one i have sworn to my servant david i will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations the heavens praise your wonders lord your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones for who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon sing for joy at your name. Your arm is endowed with power. Your hand is strong. Your right hand exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness, for you are their glory and strength. This is the word of our God. Please. Who was he? You know, Ethan the Ezraite? Who was he? 
Some say he was a wise man from the tribe of Judah. Some suggest he was the grandson of the prophet Samuel. And others say, well, it's a psalm. He was a musician, a Levite. The psalms were written by different people over centuries, actually. Many by King David, and there was one written by Moses. There was one written by Solomon. There were psalms written by the sons of Asaph the sons of Korah, excuse me, and Asaph himself, and this one by Ethan the Ezraite. They were written by different people at different times, in different situations, for different occasions. They were written to be sung to different tunes and played on different musical instruments, but they all continued to repeat a central theme again and again and again a theme that we see repeated in the heart of the Virgin Mary this morning, a theme that fills our songs of praise to God as well. We began, didn't we, by uh, the angel or, or the, the Lord sending uh, the, the prophet uh, Samuel to, to David to tell him that God was gonna make a covenant with him. It would be a one-sided covenant, it wouldn't be two, there was no obligation to, to David but the Lord said, I am going to establish your line. The promised Savior is going to come as a branch of your family tree. He's not only going to be your Lord, he's also going to be your son. I'm going to establish your royal line. And his kingdom is going to be a very special one. It's not going to have any boundaries. And it will never end. And so it happened that the promise was made, David died. And his son, remember his name, Solomon, came to the throne after 40 years, he died. And then his son Rehoboam came to the throne and the kingdom didn't expand, it was split in two. But the line of David continued to rule in the southern kingdom until at the time of the Babylonians. Remember that king with the long name, King Nebuchadnezzar. He came and he destroyed the city. He leveled the walls and totally destroyed the temple, carried the people off into captivity and placed a governor in charge of the province. But yet we read in the Gospel of Matthew that the line of David still continued. And we have the genealogy there in chapter one, that there were 14 generations, Matthew writes, from the time of David to the time of the Babylonian captivity and 14 more generations from the time of the Babylonian captivity to the birth of a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of David. Joseph, who was not the actual father of Jesus, of course, because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary, but he was on the books, the legal father of, of Jesus. After more than a thousand years of prophecies and promises and waiting, the Lord faithfully fulfilled his word. He sends his angel Gabriel to a virgin named Mary. And we read, in the, as we just read in Luke chapter 1, he came to a virgin named Mary who was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Late Luke makes a very strong point to that. He came to a virgin who was engaged or married to a woman named Mary. Came to Mary who was pledged to a man by the name of Joseph, excuse me, who was a descendant of David. He told her this, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, six months later, after Mary was very, very pregnant, and the baby Jesus was kicking inside her womb, it, it had all sunk in. And you might remember that she, from her heart, sang a song that we call the Magnificat. And in her song that comes from her heart, she says this, 
My soul glorifies, literally magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors, just as he promised. God is faithful after all those years of promises and prophecies. God is faithful. God is keeping his, his promise. It was the same song that was sung by Ethan the Ezraite. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your home, your throne firm through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. Mary from her heart spoke of how God had fulfilled the promises that he had made, that God is faithful. The same song that was sung by Ethan the Ezraite in Psalm 89. And we still sing of God's faithfulness today. Once in David's royal city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in the manger for his bed. Faithful. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. The Lord, the serpent crusher, promised to Adam and Eve. The seed of Abraham in whom all the families of the earth would be blessed. The Lord is come, the forever king, whose kingdom would have no boundaries and have no end, the son of David. We still sing of God's faithfulness today. And the apostle Paul talked about God's faithfulness when he says, God's promises to us are not yes and no, that maybe they're, well, it might happen, maybe not. But God's promises, what did, what did Paul say? He wrote, they are amen. That's the way it's going to be. God is faithful. He fulfills his promises. And we too might be waiting weeks or months. Some of us might wait for years. But God's promises that we sing in one of our hymns are ever faithful and ever sure. And the apostle Peter encouraged God's people, just commit your cares unto the Lord and humble yourself under his mighty hand and he will exalt you in due time. Our God is a faithful God. Faithful. Someone on the other side of the world, we'll just pick a country, we'll just say Japan, writes out a little Christmas message for you and signs it with love, have a blessed Christmas, and, and puts that, that Christmas note and card in, in an envelope and, and takes it to the post office. And it's put on a truck and it's taken to an airplane and then it has flown over billions and billions of people to the city of Atlanta, the Hartsfield-Jackson Airport, a city of five million. And there that letter is unloaded and put on the truck and taken to your post office. And from that post office, there, there it is, sort it out and put on a delivery truck and then it is taken to your area, to your subdivision, to your street, to your home, to your mailbox, to your hands. Out of all the people in the world, that letter came to you. You were very near and dear to someone's heart. And that illustration just comes to mind as you read those first verses from, that we read today from Luke chapter 1. Huh? It says, the Lord sent the angel Gabriel from his throne in heaven. From heaven above to earth I come. And he came to a little country 
on the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea. And it says he went to a province in that country by the name of Galilee. And in, in Galilee, he went to one of its towns, a town by the name of Nazareth. And he went and he found a woman. And he, he found a virgin. And not just any virgin, but a virgin who was to be married to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of David. And the angel comes and appears to her and says, Mary, greetings. And she is confused, and obviously if an angel appeared to us, we would be the same. But the angel says to her, the angel says to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Literally, you have found grace, the word favor. You have found grace, that special undeserved love that none of us deserve. We, we sinners do not deserve from, a, from the hands of our gracious God, but he gives it to us anyway. Undeserved love. You have found favor with God out of all the women of the world, out of all the virgins here in the Holy Land. You have been chosen to be the mother of the Son of God. And after all that, it once again sang it, sank in, in her Magnificat, Mary would sing of that grace, not in that word itself, but just listen to what she said in her Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed for the Mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy, his love is grace. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. That was Mary's song about God's grace that he had chosen her. It's the same song that one of God's chosen people, a man by the name of Ethan the Ezraite, sang years before. It was about God's grace, about his love. And we, we read uh, the first couple of verses here and then beginning at verse 14. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness, for you are their glory and strength. His mercy and grace extend from generation to generation. Generation after generation sings the same songs about God's love. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for our sakes he became poor, so that we through his poverty might become rich. And so we too sing the songs of praise of, for God's grace, just as did Mary, just as did Ethan the Ezraite. We sing of a love that we don't deserve. A love that is shown us here this morning in this one-sided covenant the Lord makes with this poor sinner. For in his grace, he says, I will always love you. This is my body and this is my blood. Pour it out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And so we sing of his grace. We sing of his grace at Christmas time. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? This, this is Christ the Lord. Nail, spear will pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. That's grace. Where shepherds lately knelt 
and kept the angel's word. How can I, will I forget how love was born? How love was born and burned its way into my heart, unasked, unforced, unearned. A still small voice to cry one day for me. A still small voice that will cry one day, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A still small voice that one day will cry, it is finished. A still small voice that will cry one day for me. And that's grace. Yesterday afternoon, there was a funeral in South Atlanta. Gary and Mary were members here before we had this church, before we had our church building over in Alpharetta. They were sort of right there at the beginning of Beautiful Savior. And after a few years, they moved away. They moved overseas. They came back and they established a home in South Atlanta, member of Pastor Schrader's church there, Faith in Sharpsburg. And Mary's mom came to live with her, Mrs. Koenig. And, and Mary's mom passed away last week, quite suddenly, unexpectedly, even though she was 92 years old. And her funeral was yesterday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And before I watched the live stream, I didn't know what they would be singing. You know what they sang? They sang, in Christ alone. They sang, I know that my Redeemer lives. They sang about God's grace. They sang about 92 years of faithfulness. 92 years of faithfulness. We have a hymnal, although we aren't using them during the COVID right now. A new hymnal is coming out next year. And some of our old songs are not going to be in the new hymnal, and there's going to be a lot of new songs. And I don't know what the new songs are, but I already know what they're about. Love, faithfulness. And I know what they're singing today in Alpharetta. I know what they're singing today in Africa. I know what they're singing at, at Mighty Fortress Lutheran Church this morning in Hiram. The same thing they're singing before God's throne in heaven. The love and the faithfulness that we sing about here, that Mary had in her heart, that Ethan the Ezraite sang about way back when. For his love and his faithfulness Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Please stand and we'll join in the Nicene Creed.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving to God for the grace shown us in Jesus Christ, for faith to believe that nothing is impossible for him, and that everything will be to us according to his word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. For faithful preachers of the gospel, for their safety and for blessing on their efforts for our synod president, our district president and circuit pastor, and for the holy Christian church on earth, that God would strengthen it in every place. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, its leaders, and those newly elected to serve, that God would preserve their lives and guide their actions for the good of our people, for peace among the nations of the earth, and that God would preserve us from pestilence and famine, war and bloodshed and every evil. Lord, in your mercy. For all women with child, especially Chrissy Copeland and Pretty Dimmel, that God would grant them increasing happiness in their blessing. For those in need of help and healing from our Savior's hand and for continued encouragement of his Holy Spirit, we pray especially for Jim Cranick and Joni Morton, Carrie Luneberg, and all those who are on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy. For Natalie Brown's Uncle Scott, whose time of grace seems to be drawing to a close, that he be strengthened in faith, have every confidence and hope in Jesus, forgiveness and love, and that his heart might be set on his heavenly home that has been prepared for him. And for those who mourn for Mark and Gina's niece, Stephanie, that they would take comfort in the glory that is now theirs and hers, and look forward to the resurrection and eternal reunion that is to come. Lord, in your mercy. For all who receive this morning Christ's holy body and precious blood, that they may eat and drink it in repentance and faith and in unity for all the love and blessing that you desire to give us this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood that is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
At this time, we invite to the Lord's Supper our members here at Beautiful Savior and any guests and visitors that would love to uh, partake of this sacrament, we kindly ask that you speak with one of the pastors before doing so. We'd love to have you partake in the future. You'll find the uh, distribution hymn printed for you in the worship folder. Come for all things are now ready.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. And good morning once again. God's blessing on your Christmas week. Safe travels to those that are traveling and a joyful celebration, uh, God willing, here at Beautiful Savior. Uh, we have three services planned for Christmas Eve and one for Christmas Day. And so uh, looking forward to being together. And we have one announcement this morning. Eric, please. Sunday school and so please by all means and uh, made with and what I was going to say and also by from the hand of a very wonderful wife I know how that all works I know how that all works so uh, pl please pick one up and if you notice now children I I know you'll want some ornaments too I noticed there were four candies in each bag too I so 
I get to get mine first because I go back there. So God's blessing. <laughs>